All right, what's up everybody? Andrew Mahone here, back with some Pokemon trading card game online action. Gonna be playing with the new Burning Shadow set. Super stoked about this. Got the microphone fixed, so the audio should be good. Gonna be pumping out some more PTCGO gameplays here now that we have access to it. So, was able to crack a bunch of Burning Shadows packs, was able to get my hands on four Gardevoir GX, so we're gonna be rolling some games with my Gardevoir GX deck. So this is going to be world's format since standard format right now is not rotated on PTCGO. So pretty much going to get to roll around with me while we do some world's testing. Should be fun, exciting, see how Gardevoir GX works. I'm excited to test out Gardevoir. I want to test out Volcanion. I want to continue to put in a little more time to Decidueye as well since Decidueye gets Acerola and Guzma, which are both awesome for that deck. Let's go ahead and get started here. See what we got. Got a Ralts we're gonna start. You can see that I play these Ralts and Curlias from Ancient Origins because they got attacks that do more damage than the other ones. Other than that, the rest of this hand is not looking super fantastic, but we are playing against a Salazzle deck. So, should be interesting. I can't say that I've played against a Salazzle deck before. So, this is uh, the first time for everything, huh? Joe Pranito here, Joe Pranito one with his Salazzle. Maybe he's playing what the Salazzle that evolves from this and, and a Muck GX. You know, maybe he's trying out Muck GX. Maybe he is just playing Salazzle GX. Maybe this is a Volcanion deck with a Tech Salazzle in it. Really have no idea what I'm up against. So we'll go ahead and see. Back over here on my side though, I do start with the Bridget. So that's pretty cool. I can bridge it on the first turn and get you know a couple Ralts, maybe a Diancy, and then turn two I can use Guzma to get my Diancy into the active, and then use you know Diancy's uh, Diancy's magical something sparkling something sparkling something, I forget what it's called, in order to evolve up one of my benched Pokemon. So we can do that, and it looks like. I, I truthfully have no idea what my opponent's doing here. They've got a little Lolan Rattata out here. I know Lolan Raticate is some attack for like a double colorless that allows you to that allows you to search your deck for like 10 cards. It's ridiculous, but I've never actually seen it played in any deck. Opponent tries a super scoop up there, which makes me think that maybe they're playing the Salazzle that burns and poisons because super scoop up would make sense to allow them to reuse that's Salazzle's ability on Evolve. So I don't know, they failed their Super Scoop up, they're sitting here and they're gonna think for a minute. They got a Rangaroo out. I also am probably gonna be getting an Rangaroo off of my Bridget just because I don't have any other draw cards here. So we're gonna see what my top deck is looking like and go from there. We got a Lysander. All right, Lysander and Guzma not gonna be doing us too much good. You see I do play the Diancy and I play in a Rangaroo. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that as well. All right, so we're rocking and rolling. Let's go ahead and grab these guys and see what we can do. Gonna be a, a slow roller of a game over here. Gonna attach this Fairy Energy to the Diancy just because next turn the game plan is to Guzma that Diancy out into the active. So we're gonna go ahead and pass. See, what am I looking at here? If your opponent's active Pokemon is poison, attack does 40 more damage. My opponent could knock out, yep, could and will probably knock out my Ralts. Yep, because they got a turn two Salazzle GX, gonna be using Heat Blast for 110 damage. I don't really know what kind of synergy Salazzle GX and Eradicate have. Oh, that's not even the Raticate that gets 10 things. Okay, this one, if the Pokemon has a Pokemon tool attached, defending Pokemon has a Pokemon tool Attached to it, let me read, attack does 50 more damage. So it can do a free 60 damage. That's kind of cool. All right, looks like I don't need to play my Guzma to get this Diancy into the active. Oh, and I get an Ultra Ball. All right, we're rolling, guys. So we're going to go ahead and Ultra Ball away. Probably Lysander and Guzma. Yeah, we're going to Ultra Ball away. Lysander and Guzma. We're going to get a Lele. And we're just gonna go ahead and get ourselves an N. That's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna Wondrous Tag, go get a supporter. I'm gonna grab an, I don't wanna really, huh, I'll get the Sycamore. I do not wanna give my opponent like all these cards here for free. I play four Gardevoir in this deck, so I'm not really worried about 
you know, discarding one here. We do play a lot. Whoops. Let's go ahead and instruct for one. And hopefully we don't get anything that we can't. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Let's, uh, Oh, wonder tag again. Sometimes it's beneficial before you play Sycamore. You can wonder tag and search your deck out for like a one of supporter that you just want to ditch. You know, for Versus Seeker later in the game, that's not going to be a play that we really find ourselves doing after Versus Seeker rotates, but you know, it's kind of something that we do now. That or, you know, post rotation, if you wanted to, you know, do wonder tag there to search out, maybe you have a one of Bridget in your deck that you're not going to use after the first turn of the game. You could do it there too. So Sparkling Wish, that's the name of the attack I was looking for earlier. We're probably just going to end up Sparkling Wish here, and we're going to evolve our benched Ralts up into a Guard of War. Or not into a Guard of War, into a Curlia. And I did that instead of evolving the Curlia up into a Guard of War. So next turn, I just have the option to slap down two Guard of Wars. I already have one in my hand here. Hopefully my opponent does not Lysander up this Curlia or Guzma up this Curlia with the double colorless on it that would really kind of grind my gears here he goes yep okay not what i wanted but this is fine so what is yeah okay so he's just gonna retreat for free and then hit me with the heat blast so not what i wanted my opponent is gonna start taking some really big knockouts here now that they've started off with this heat blast quick heat blast here can't believe it so that's a little concerning. I don't know that I'll be able to get enough energy on. I definitely will not be able to get enough energy onto my guard of war to knock this thing out. However, my opponent should not be able to necessarily knock me out next turn either. So I could, yeah, I really got to go in and hit him. So gonna promote the Curlia. Gonna be able to accelerate three energies onto this thing. That's useful, but really kind of messing me up that he was able to lie sand me there i don't like that so let's accelerate one fairy energy to the guard of war gonna attach double colorless then we're gonna ultra ball away my opponent only has four cards in hand so i don't really mind just sycamoring again there's really no point in ending yet i'm gonna get another ralts just because i need another bench pokemon and we're gonna instruct for a couple but then i don't want to draw into a double colorless so i don't really need anything i'm not gonna instruct because if I draw a double colorless there, that would really be unfortunate. Or if I draw one of my Gardevoirs too, that would have been unfortunate. I think I want to bump my opponent's choice bands here just to kind of nerf their damage output for sure. Done. Cool. I got the Acerola in my hand, so that's good. But unfortunately, I don't have too much else going on. I could drop the Sudowoodo to limit their options, but I want to kind of keep the option. I could go for my third Tapu Lele. So I'm going to keep my bench space open. And then we're just going to infinite force for some damage here. 150. Opponent's going to be going down next turn unless they heal or do something like that. They've taken two prizes, so they can pump out 130 damage with Diabolical Claws. That's not that much. So they'd rather use Heat Blast still. Oh, and they're going to Kakui, so they get a little more damage output. Let's see, man, I'm going to be pretty bummed if I lose to a Salazzle GX deck with my first time out with this Gardevoir deck. I don't think that's going to be the case. They were able to start out very aggressively, but I should be able to rebound here. I think so. I think I should be able to rebound. Let's take a look. I can evolve up into Curlia. That's good. Unfortunately, I didn't have a rare candy there or else I could have whipped out that Acerola. That would have been a pretty swifty little play there. Would have liked that. I can, oh, I like this. Okay, so let's do this. I'm going to Secret Spring onto my, my opponent's taking two prizes. I'm going to Secret Spring onto my Tapu Lele. This is cool. So check this out. This is just showing how good Acerola is. And then Gardevoir comes up into my hand. We're going to promote the Tapu Lele. I'm going to attach the double colorless to Tapu Lele. Then we can slap that Ralts right back down. And here we go, right? Now we're in business. So next turn, you know, I got a Gardevoir back up. This is fine. And I'm pretty much ready to rock and roll. I don't think my opponent's going to be able to knock out this Tapu Lele just because they've only taken two prizes. So they're capped out at like 130, 140 damage. 
So, so long as I can kind of wall with these Pokemon GX, you can see even next turn, I have the option to just Acerola again. And because I have a Ranguru down here, I don't really mind, you know, if I get end or if I, you know, if I'm not playing draw supporter cards, I can kind of just keep grinding through my deck with a Ranguru and use the race Acerola one more time. Acerola has just been really good in Guard of War in my testing so far. Uh, kind of just realized this, you know, in the last week or so. Uh, I was playing a mirror with my buddy of mine, and he was playing Acerola in his Gardevoir deck, and I was not playing Acerola in mine, and he whooped me. I mean, it wasn't even close. I pretty much had no chance just because he would pull these back-to-back -back Acerola plays, and there was nothing I could do about it. So, you see my opponent does opt to Guzma out my Ralts. I don't really know what he plans on doing there. You're going to Hyper Fang for zero, or Enhanced Fang for zero. I don't have any tools on this Ralt, so I don't really know what my opponent's thinking he's going to do. He already retreated into the Raticate. I don't, I guess he didn't have the energy for his Salazzle. So we're just going to wait and see here. Either way, I'm pretty much good to go. I have a Guzma in the discard, so I could Versus Seeker for a Guzma and promote whoever I want. I could promote, you know, the Gardevoir after I evolve it. I can promote, the, you know, uh, this Tapu Lele again if I decide I want to go back in with Tapu Lele. I do like Oranguru in here. I've been testing Oranguru and Octillery. I like Oranguru better just because it's consistent. You can get it out with Bridget on the first turn. You just slap it down kind of, you know, haphazardly, and then you just have it, and it's stable, and I just love Oranguru for that. He's just always there, very consistent, easy to set up. Oh, what did they use? Enhanced Fang, tool card attached to his 50 more damage. I don't really know. Yeah, I do have a dark resistance. I don't really know what he did there. But anyways, let's move out. I think maybe he was expecting to knock that out. Does this have a darkness energy attached to it? Oh, if this Pokemon is, po I'm sorry guys, I'm reading this wrong. If Raticate has a tool, it does 60, okay. Got it. So Ralts doesn't have a tool, so he did 60, minus 20 for resistance. Looks like my opponent forgot about that young little resistance there. Sorry, I never really encountered that Raticate before, so I, I was reading that completely wrong. Let's see, I can Guzma my Guardi into the active, but I won't be able to knock it out. I can retreat it, but then I would need some more energies. Let's see, I had two, four, six, eight, ten. Oh, if I Guzma that thing in the active, I could just bring out something that I'd rather hit into. And I'd rather hit into that Salazzle GX. So let's just do that. Let's Guzma. Oh, being a I'm gonna select the Guzma, and then we're gonna bring out that Salazzle GX. We wanna hit that one, it's the one with the energy on it. And I could just go up with the Tapu Lele again. That way I kind of protect my Gardevoir back here on the bench. And I'm going to do that just to try and build up a big, a big Gardevoir. This is what I want. And that way, you know, maybe I can end the game by sweeping with just one big old Guardi. That would be fantastic. Let's Ultra Ball away the Pseudo Wudo and the Hex. I don't really care to play the pseudo wudo down because my opponent will definitely just remove the let's get the tapu lele that's fine my opponent will just remove the lele i imagine from their bench we could field blower these float stones this is fine we'll instruct for another There we go, and we got a Burst Seeker. So I'm kind of just thinning my, you know, thinning my deck out at this point. Like, I Ultra Ball away the Pseudo Wudo just so that it's not in my hand anymore. I don't need it, and I don't want it. I don't want to draw into that Hex either. My opponent's deck doesn't play any abilities. So I imagine, you know, at this point, now that we're kind of grinding down towards the end of the game here, I'm just trying to maximize the amount of, maximize each of the cards that are left in my deck. I just want to make sure that the cards that are left in the deck are all good cards. You know, the Ultra Ball... It's, you know, a small sacrifice to make for make, getting that Hex and getting that um, getting that Pseudo Wudo kind of out of my hand. Also, you know, just being able to instruct for one with the Ranguru, make sure that I have more options for next turn. As you can see, I'm set up pretty good. Got a Guard of War going for next turn, ready to roll. 
Got a Versus Seeker, so I have options from the discard pile. Tapu Lele, so I have options from the deck. I don't think that there's really too much that my opponent's going to be able to do to save themselves this game. Now that I've kind of stabilized, you know, they were able to go quick and aggressive against me with their Salazzles, but now that I have kind of got set up, I was able to bounce back with that Acerola. That was a big play on my Gardevoir, and, you know, now I'm stable. I got two Gardevoirs that I'm going to have up. You can see I'm rocking this Tapu Lele out here. Tapu Lele is just such an awesome kind of stable attacker in this deck, and it's so nice to have to fall back on in clutch little moments like this. Also, you know, wouldn't underestimate Oranguru either. I have totally gotten in there with Oranguru and used that Psychic Attack more times than I can count. It's really good just for kind of being an odd prize attacker as well, which Gardevoir doesn't really have any of, so really good for that. Let's check this out. I need 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. I do 100 damage. I need to do 120. So we want to knock this thing out. 3, 6, 9, 12. I'm just going to attach the double colorless energy here. I'll instruct for one. Got another Guardi. At this point, let's see. I can't see how many cards are left in my deck. 16. <laughs> All right. I need a, I want a float stone, and I just want to knock this thing out with the Guardi. So I should be able to do that. If I just, oh, or I could, ooh, my opponent would probably just not be here. Let's just Ace Rolla. We're going to Ace Rolla that thing right back up. Come on, Tapu Lele. Just come right back to the hand. Oh, this is the point where the opponent would probably sick of my stuff by now. And now I could just accelerate that energy right back onto the field. So strong, so good. I'm going to put it on my benched Gardevoir just to kind of diversify my resources a little bit so I don't have all my chickens in one basket or all my eggs in one basket don't count my chickens before they hatch anyways now you can see pretty much got this game in the bag i don't think there's anything my opponent could do i kind of was able to stop them right at two prizes so they were never able to ramp up salazzle gx's diabolical claws if they had taken just one more prize or two more prizes that diabolical claws would have been doing a ton of damage radicate alone radicate not the best you know, not the best backup attacker. Maybe my opponent just, you know, and I, I get the synergy. It's it's a free attack. So since Salazzle GX takes two manual attachments, they can attack with that Raticate while they're building up Salazzle GX. But you can see Acerola was an absolute all-star there. Totally insane card. I was sleeping on that originally and, and kind of had not included that in my first draft of my Gardevoir GX decks. But Acerola is absolutely a must-have in these lists. So Hopefully you liked that video, uh, enjoying being back here on Pokemon Trading Card Game Online. Take it easy. Let me know what you think of Gardevoir GX in the comments below. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. Peace. Deuces.